people are worrying that they're going to lose you, Andreas, to the altcoin sphere. Oh, no. Peter says, Recently, I see more and more people, especially on Twitter, commenting on whether you will remain faithful to Bitcoin. And in certain ways, I empathize. You certainly have never been in this for the money. That's why. That's what I truly and thoroughly believe. It makes me wonder why you would spend so much time on Ethereum and even writing a book about how to master Ethereum. I've always looked up to you as a person with a deep technical understanding, not only about Bitcoin, but about distributed systems in general. Looking at Ethereum from various angles just makes my heart bleed. It's saddening and goes against so many ideologies that you have been proclaiming and teaching over the years. So I guess the question is, why? Not for the money, not for the fame, and undoubtedly not for the technology. So why? Um, Peter, undoubtedly it is for the technology. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but the reason I'm interested in Ethereum is because I'm interested in the application of blockchain technology to consensus networks that resolve the state of smart contracts. I'm interested in programmable blockchains. I'm interested in blockchains that use a virtual machine to resolve the state of smart contracts, so as to expand the state of possibilities and make programming blockchains much more flexible. Now, don't be under any illusion that what I'm doing, writing Mastering Ethereum, is writing a book about why you should invest in the particular chain launched by Vitalik Buterin and many others uh, back in 2014. I'm writing a book about uh, blockchains that use smart contracts within virtual machines. And the book I'm writing it's called Mastering Ethereum, but it also applies to Ethereum Classic. It applies to Rootstock. It applies to Lisk. It applies to EOS. It applies to a variety of other virtual machine smart contract-based blockchains. I am fascinated by this technology, not because it provides better answers than Bitcoin, but because it provides different answers than Bitcoin. These technologies as a whole are about changing the trade-offs between security and flexibility. Um, Bitcoin is by far the blockchain that is the most secure, the most decentralized, and provides robust monetary systems. That's not the purpose of Ethereum, and it doesn't compete with Bitcoin at that. The purpose of Bitcoin is to take that trade-off and shift it to the other side, where it's more flexible in order to be able to do a much broader range of programmable smart contracts. And these programmable smart contracts are not going to be as secure as Bitcoin. That's a given. That's how the trade-off uh, works. And it, they're not going to be as scalable as Bitcoin, um, because the scalability is much more difficult to achieve when you're dealing with all of this state. Um, and they're not going to provide the robust monetary guarantees of Bitcoin, again, because that's not the trade-off that was aimed for. That doesn't mean that this technology is useful or useless. That's for the market to decide. And whether you want to write applications and smart contracts, dApps, things like that, up to you. Does it mean that this technology is interesting? Absolutely. And whether you agree with these trade-offs or not, they do open a whole new realm of technology. Uh, research, experimentation, and innovation. And right now, most of that research, experimentation, and innovation is being used to make shit coins by the truckload. And that's not good. But that's not the technology. The technology has opened the door. The fact that a whole bunch of idiots have tried to rush through that door to make shit coins has nothing to do with the underlying technology. Before Ethereum, people were making shit coins using Bitcoin's technology. <laughs> Don't fool yourself. There will always be people who are unscrupulous and want to make shit coins. The bottom line here is that I'm interested in technology, and I'm open to all different technologies and reading and learning about them, even if I don't agree with their governance models, even if I don't agree with the choices they've made about how to fork and how to uh, fix problems and fix bugs, even if I don't agree with the level of centralization or decentralization they have, because they're not alone in this space. They're competing against a variety of other technologies. And the technology of using virtual machines and consensus algorithms and blockchains to run smart contracts 
That technology exists independent of Vitalik Buterin's Ethereum, independent of any current implementation and whether that succeeds or fails, or has a big price or a low price, independent of whether these things compete or don't compete against Bitcoin, which, in my opinion, they don't. Um, that technology is interesting. There is a real technology there, and I'm interested in it. And if you think that I'm going to be faithful uh, to Bitcoin by limiting my intellectual curiosity, by refusing to read or learn about technologies that may, in some people's minds, threaten the supremacy of the one true doctrine. That's not science. That's religion. And I don't do religion. That's a litmus test. That's a loyalty test. That's a purity test. And I don't do any of that. I'm going to remain intellectually curious. If ideas threaten you, uh, then you need to learn more about them, not stop learning. Um, this is not a faith-based system. At least I hope it's not, and I, I'm not interested in faith-based systems. Does that mean that I'm no longer interested in Bitcoin? Absolutely not. I am absolutely interested in Bitcoin. I'm also interested in Ethereum. I'm also interested in half a dozen other chains, technologies, layers, and protocols, all swirling around this amazing cryptocurrency system. We are so focused on setting up the circular firing squad and litmus tests that we've forgotten what the real enemy of this is. And the real enemy is not the not quite decentralized system just across the road that other people use cryptocurrency technology to build. The real enemy is totalitarianism, fascism, corrupt crony capitalism, and destructive banking systems that are absolutely centralized, share none of our values, and are causing enormous damage to the world. Stop worrying about whether Ethereum is going to compete or isn't going to compete against Bitcoin. This entire cryptocurrency space is growing. You don't like Ethereum? That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Don't use it. It's an open market. Nobody's forcing you to use it. But the reason I am writing a book about this technology is first and foremost because I want to learn about all of the intricate details of how a virtual machine a blockchain, a consensus algorithm can be used to execute smart contracts. Not because I'm interested in one implementation of that, but because I'm interested in all of the possible implementations of that idea, because they provide a very broad and rich domain for experimentation. And you can do that with a variety of monetary policies. You can do it with a variety of governance policies. You can do it in centralized or decentralized uh, networks. Uh, you can do it across the board. So that's why I'm writing Mastering Ethereum. Um, I'm still very much interested, invested, and working on Bitcoin and other open blockchains every day. And I will continue to work on open blockchains, and I will continue to be curious and interested and playful with technology, so I can learn as much as I can about this new uh, technology. And if that makes me disloyal. That's okay. I don't mind.